Hey y'all, this is Proverbs 31 for April 30th, 2023, last day of the month. Let's do this. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such that are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth slowly or doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength. She strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good and her candle goes out, goeth out not by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings and ta of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Say it every month. Boss, babe. So, well, I'm reading up. <laughs> Proverbs 31, man. Listen to a mom. Tell him a son. What's up? You know? And um, it includes, like, hey, this is what a woman should look like. This is how a woman should operate. This is how a woman should treat you. And before you're like, wait a minute. Where's the rest of it? Where, how you're supposed to treat her? Well, that's part of this, plus all the other proverbs we've read for this. Um, but like, don't give your strength to strange women, and don't have strong drinks, and don't drink wine. Basically, like, be a sober-minded person so that you can do righteously and take care of your responsibilities. Um, I had to work on these M's. I feel like I went backwards on it for certain. Many examples of how the woman is working in and out of the house, which, I mean, I literally just listened to Pastor Mike Winger talk about, is it biblical for a guy to be a stay-at-home dad or to let the woman work? So I was glad to receive that in the end, like, no, it's not biblical just for a man to work and a woman to stay at home. Um, we should be applying wisdom in all these different situations, so... I do feel like it's the natural order for a man to work. In, in my situation, we stopped for homeschool, or I stopped, and for a couple other reasons with my career. Uh, but my wife makes more money, so what are you going to do? It's me work a career that I had some issues with to spend it all sending the kids to daycare? No, I'd just rather be home with them and us do our thing and they're finally seeing like the oldest is really seeing the benefits of homeschool and he's comparing it to kind of his friend's school experience so hopefully we we'll keep growing in wisdom and knowledge and the fear of god and um yeah i digress but you know 
I was speaking about the woman working in and outside of the house. And I mean, here's an example in the Old Testament of both, you know, doing things inside and inside out. And then on the New Testament, Priscilla and Aquila working together, making nets, probably right outside their home. So situations change. I'm looking forward to a change. Someone in my house church is looking forward to starting school for boys, a 7th through 12th grade. Well, if you read, or if, if you read this, if you listen to this, pray for it. Pray for it. Because I think he's got the right vision, and he wants to have, you know, a 7 through 12 school to, let's just say to be different from the current school system is running things. So, I think that's noble, and I'd like to support him. Um... I tried to park in a spot for the sun, as I said that I would, so I'm now in a park. I need to get home because I hear it's chaos there, so I need to get dinner done and everybody bathed and in bed, but sunshine that way, rain that way, it just kind of expanded and, and got me. I'm on the edge, so if that's what you hear, hope it's not making me hard to hear with the active noise canceling. Still can't figure out. I think that's part of my stutter, too, is not hear, I'm hearing myself, but I maybe it's just like I get tired or frustrated and I'll start doing it mm. well with that that wraps up the King James version I've really enjoyed the King James version okay so I realize this is like next chapter but I said that I was going to go back and look so I looked at let me look at all my translations the NIV the NASB the ASV the KJV those are all four that we've read so far and then I often see the ESV because that's what the daily verses have been in and next will be the NKJV New King James but sure enough it's like 50-50 split between roosters and greyhounds so I gotta go back and look at this original manuscript and I'll report back further on that so I mean they're two different things right like a rooster runs, but they kind of strut, and that's what's glorious about them. And a greyhound, I mean, if you've ever seen it, they, like, look like they're racing when they're sitting still. They're like a, they're a work of art. But um, I, I got to know more. This is the kind of thing I like getting inspired about. And then today, let me just tack this on here. Maybe I'll have to make a short about it or something, but today... Mike blew my mind, Pastor Mike, because when the Bible's talking about hearing the Word of God, the Bible wasn't widely distributed yet. It just it wasn't around. And then we got the printing press about 500 years ago, and then bam, first book is the Bible and made thousands and thousands of copies of it distributed. But up until then, it was word of mouth, and then like, hearing and the the word in the greek was um i mean it's either rayam or rayas i i cannot remember it right this second but it was like rayam rayas but not logos like the bible the word so hearing through the word it's like hearing the lord speak to you so there's lots there's just there's a lot to unpack in that verse and i think that would be a verse to look to and we need to look at the context but that would be a verse to look to when it's like you mean to tell me that little such and such in country xyz who's never heard the word or jesus is going to hell and it's like no because the word tells us that people can look around and be awestruck and appreciate god's glory and that we know right from wrong it's written in our hearts even though we struggle and even though wrong is maybe our default we know what right looks like and we struggle against it and um this verse that i mean for lack of reading a scripture for lack of having the scripture or the letters or the bible god can speak to you he can speak to you he can meet you where you are and you hear him and you know with certainty what the answer was or what he said. So, I mean, that concept, that was mind-blowing. 
the original Greek and just taking for those things for granted. It was good. It was a good sermon. And a lot of it was on Peter and as an angry, blusterous dude, I identify a lot with Peter and maybe we didn't give him enough credit. You know, it was, oh, he denied Jesus three times. What a weak person. But no, he, he wasn't scared. He just tried to chop a dude's head in half and missed and got his ear, you know. And Jesus was not thrilled about that. And then he's waiting outside the court. And John, the disciple, the homeboy, they're just like, hey. And he goes in, like, not a lot of questions. So one theory is that maybe he was, he was a fish, the fish guy. He was the fish purveyor. So it was like, fish guy, come on in. And, like, even though there was some shady stuff going on, it was kind of like the household knew him, the high priest's household. So he was kind of given a pass to be in there and be watching the what was going on. Whereas Peter stood out in the courtyard and somebody was like, when he decided, okay, I'm going to go in, it was like, hey, aren't you, wait a minute, aren't you one of his disciples? I was like, no, 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 no. And then again, and then again, when the third one was when the, the kin of the dude with the ear getting chopped off shows up and was like, dude, I, I saw you. I know it was you. And I was like, yeah, it wasn't me. But it's like, it wasn't weakness that he was there. I think the, the point was like, maybe Peter had a plan and he was trying to do it. The point of the sermon was Peter was trying to do it his way, his way. Right. And that's what a bunch of these proverbs, this is what the point is. Like we're trying to do things our way. We can't be us centered. We got to be God centered and it changes our approach. Peter was like Bruce Willis and Die Hard. Had the sword sheathed, but he was in the courtyard. He was ready to bust in there. We're like, let's go, Jesus. Fight his way out for his Lord. Jesus told him, you know, am I not going to drink this cup that my father gave me? Basically, like, he told him multiple times that week, like, Peter, you're missing the point. So, after that happened... You know, they saw each other. And Peter realized what he had done. And there's an example later in Scripture where Peter raises a, a kid from the dead. And he does it in the same way that Jesus did. But it didn't sound like he had a plan going in. He got everybody out and he started praying. And he told her, you know, get up. Because that's what he had seen his master do. And that's what his master told us to do. So he didn't go in with his plan. He just went with God's plan. He showed up and prayed for her. And when God spoke to him, he said the words aloud. And that little girl got up. That's all learn to be God-centered and have faith like that. And with the KJV translation done, be blessed.